Hey, it's Clayton, and welcome to a brand new episode of Cell Dweller Production. Friend and fellow producer Joey Sturgis was here a few months ago, and in passing had mentioned a new plugin he was working on. And when he described it, it seemed like a really simple idea, but the only two words that I could think of were, hurry up, because I can't wait to get my hands on it. So he has given me a preview copy, and I want to share it with you today, show you some cool things you can do with it. Let's jump in. <laughs> But first look, Sub Destroyer is a very simple plugin. Very simple GUI, very small footprint, which is kind of cool. And when Joey had described this to me, he just basically said, yeah, it's going to do sub drops, which is great because I have made a lot of my own sub drops manually and they take a long time to make. Getting a plugin to do that automatically for me would save me tons of time. So I actually built a little track, which I'll show you a little bit later, comprised of like six instances of Sub Destroyer. And that's all that's in it, besides some drums from my Sonics sample pack and some effects, that's it. So if we look at the GUI, it's pretty, um, for the most part, self-explanatory. You've got, uh, if you input MIDI into the plugin like you would any other VST, you play a keyboard, you're playing notes, and you've got basic sine wave, triangle wave, a square wave, and a saw wave. You change your waveforms there. There's a limiter built in, which is really handy to have. Um, and then on the first tab down here, under automate, you've got a hold button. And when you press this button, whatever frequency you have dialed in with this knob is what it's gonna play back. And, and I kinda use that functionality in the track and I'll show you how I did in, in, in a few minutes. This is the cool part right here that I'm excited about. When I first saw it, I was like, oh my God, this is gonna save me hours. It's called the trigger tab. And when you hit this fancy little fire button, it fires off a sub drop. And if you select a triangle or a square or a saw. What's even cooler about that, let's go back to the square because it's got lots of harmonic content so you can hear it really easily, is you have this length knob here. So if I want a much longer drop, I crank that up, fire, and there you go, a nice long sub drop. What's cool here is you've got a start frequency and an end frequency. So I can, t I can tell Sub Destroyer that I'm in this key and I want to start on this particular frequency and drop down to this frequency, which could be in the key of my song if I really cared that much to do it. But it's really handy that you can kind of dial in a starting and ending frequency as well. Here in the, um, the MIDI tab, you have kind of MIDI-based parameters that you can turn on or off and tweak. So right now, by default, it's monophonic. So you can only play one note at a time, no matter how many you slam your, uh, how many of your fingers you slam on your keyboard. But if you put in the polyphonic mode, you now have polyphony, so I can play multiple notes. Which is cool because you can use this like a synth. You've got pitch bend amount, which is really cool. Portamento, which I love, and it's so great to see that even in a plugin like this, you've got the ability to. So you've got a very concise start between each note I hit. If I'm jumping an octave, what Portamento is, if you don't know, basically allows you to slide between those notes back and forth by varying amounts. So a little bit of Portamento sounds like this, and a lot of Portamento. and no portamento. And then your output has a VU meter so you can kind of see the level kind of coming out of Sub Destroyer. A couple of cool features here. You've got a drive section here which actually adds a little bit of overdrive to your tone. What's cool about that, you have like a square wave here and you turn it on, you hear virtually nothing because there's so much harmonic content already in a square wave naturally. But when you go down to something like a sine wave, if I turn that off, there's a very low sine wave tone, so a D. If I turn this on and turn the drive up, you've got an overdriven sine wave, which is really nice. Now you've got this character, this smaller button. What's interesting for me, you've got different settings, but if you were to automate this with a sine wave through distortion, it kind of, and I don't know if this is intentional, but it kind of emulates a square wave in a vintage analog synthesizer and there's something called pulse width 
and you can modulate the pulse width which takes a square wave and you've got a, a high value and a low value and you, it basically moves the high value back and forth and what it does is it creates movement in the waveform and makes one single oscillator sound much bigger than it really is, thicker. And this in a, in a certain way emulates that. Which is pretty handy. And now another thing that's really cool, Joey showed this to me when he's here and it was eye-opening because I didn't really understand it at first or I didn't really even notice it was there. So this harmonic enhancement button right here, you turn it on and what it does is, is exactly that. It, it adds overtones to your frequency that will allow, let's say, a sine wave, which usually by nature, the lower you get, the harder it is for the human ear to hear it. You engage that button and it starts adding overtones that allow you to more easily hear that tone. Now again, we're dealing in subtlety, so that's kind of something you're going to drop this sub into your mix and mess with that and you'll kind of hear it in your mix if you turn it on and turn it off. It's a very subtle difference, but it makes all the difference in the world. So before I actually show you the track and kind of deconstruct it, I'll show you a little principle that I use a lot with analog synths and modular synths. Now this is a this is a single oscillator, so you can pick one oscillator type, which is sine, triangle, square, saw, and that's all you have. But when you have more than one oscillator in a synth, you can kind of work them against each other to create overtones and do some pretty interesting things. In the drum and bass world, even what ended up becoming the dubstep movement, a lot of it had to do with kind of multiple oscillators kind of out of tune which creates this really cool warble and I've been doing that for a really long time. I, I love that sound. So one of the things I wanted to experiment with is to see if I could do that with Sub Destroyer. And lo and behold, I can because it's a simple oscillator. So what I do is I won't use my keyboard because I, changing this value on the first tab, this frequency value, doesn't do anything when I'm playing my keyboard, but it will when I hit this hold button. So what I'm going to do uh, just for learning's sake right now, I'll just show you kind of what I did. So I put in Cubase, I put um, my track and write mode, started my transport, and now anything I do on the plugin is going to get recorded. So let me do this. Good, right? Cool, whatever. So I just recorded that. You can see down here we've got some values written in Cubase. And you'll hear that. So that's still just a single oscillator. So what I'm going to do is duplicate that track. So everything's duplicated, including the on and off. So it's triggering at the same time. And it's just going to sound louder right now because it's basically duplicating the same exact thing. And it's almost kind of phase canceling itself, etc. So what I'm going to do now is go take the second oscillator and I'm going to detune it by one or two cents right here. So it was at 80 hertz. I'm going to bring it down to 78, 79. I'm going to use my ear. And you can already hear kind of like a two oscillators out of tune, which kind of became what's known as a Reese in drum and bass, and eventually like, like I said before, like dubstep kind of production, just electronic music in general. Now I'll use, um, on both of these, I'll kind of, um, let me select a saw, and you can hear it much more easily. And what I'll do is, for argument's sake, let me turn both of these all the way up so that they're just playing. So now I've got this full open, it's just going to play a constant tone. And you'll hear, as I tweak the second Sub Destroyer's frequency, you can create a more extreme or less extreme version of two oscillators kind of out of tune with each other. And you get the idea. So that was kind of how I started this track. And what I ended up doing is taking two oscillators like that, putting them out of tune, and then I wanted to reinforce them with a sub. So I did a third sub destroyer using a sine wave, doing the same thing. I then automated the frequency knob so that I have pitch information. So I actually did 
instead of playing a keyboard, I actually used automation to change on all of those tracks the frequency knob, so I was modulating the pitch of this whole thing all together. And then I did some distorting and filtering uh, with some third-party plugins. For starters, of course I wanted to put a sub drop in here, so I did. I created a sub drop right off the get-go. And so the track starts with just a sub drop and um, I used a square wave and I basically um, arpeggiated it. I created a little arpeggio, uh, a little synth line. It's very simple. It's not the most groundbreaking arpeggio I've ever written, but it's really for demonstration purposes. So. So there, you just have a very simple, um, a very simple square wave, and what I'm doing is I'm actually modulating the EQ. I'm just, I'm just taking the built-in EQ and sweeping it, and there's so much harmonic information in a square wave in Sub Destroyer that you get that sweeping effect just with an EQ. And I've got some Echo Boy on there and FabFilter Pro Q to do some EQing. So I knew once I started building these elements that I was going to have to bring some drums in somewhere. So what I did is I grabbed a bunch of drums from my Sonics 01 producer pack and actually some that I'm working on for my Sonics 02 sample pack which is not out yet. I dropped in some drums and that multi oscillator which would be two instances of sub destroyer plus a sub sine wave, which really then is three, all kind of doing the same thing, um, comes in with the drums. You'll kind of hear it kind of filtering and being mean and growly. And you can hear in between, I've got sub drops kind of going in some of those breaks. Um, I did use an EQ, again, automating a sweeping of the frequency of the EQ on that sub destroyer stack with the kind of out of tune oscillator thing and built it from there. So I then went into another part where I kind of changed the beat up, the beat kind of double times, and there's an extra sub destroyer in there kind of doing a top end thing through some delay. Um, it's a pretty short track, but why don't we listen to it? And a nice long sub drop at the end because why not? Everything is better with a sub drop. I hope you learned something on this episode of Cell Dweller Production. Drop what you're doing right now, run out and buy this plugin because you can't afford not to. As always, subscribe to my channel because occasionally there's some cool stuff. Like or share this video and comment below because I do read them. What do you want to see in a future Cell Dweller Production? Next Tuesday, tune in for Ask Cell Dweller, where you get to ask me any question you want. And until then, this is Clayton, signing off.